I'm David Blunkett. I'm the former Secretary of State for Education and Employment, Work and Pensions and Home Secretary in the Blair Government. And I have the privilege of being in conversation with Deborah Meaden, who I think I ought to describe as uh, the doyen of the BBC television programme, The Dragon's Den. And I gather the, uh, the dancing queen of Strictly Come Dancing as well on the BBC, Deborah. Oh, you did well to avoid calling me a dragon there, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I might get around to that later on. You, you're by reputation an entrepreneur, a business leader, someone who's made your own way from the beginning. And I just wondered if you'd say a little bit about how, how you came to be an entrepreneur. I think it was right back when you were seven, wasn't it? Well, I kind of, I, I just always knew I was fascinating with business and working and doing my own thing. So yeah, I think um, even when I was tiny, I didn't know I was being an entrepreneur, but I just, I remember um, um, thinking, so what can I do? And picking some um, Forsythia from our garden and sticking them in a vase outside of the house. And uh, Did you set up a stall? I set up a flower stall, absolutely. <laughs> but it was on the wrong side. The, you know, the, the cars had driven past, which I spotted really quickly. So I moved them over to the neighbour's drive. She was furious. Lo lesson number one, be in the right place. Location, location, location. Location, very good. <laughs> and I, I mean, I'm skipping a bit, but you got very heavily into leisure, entertainment, into the holiday industry. What, yeah. How did you... What, what drove you into those? Um, I, I, sometimes I think it's just the first thing that you do and then you, I, I love business per se. It just happened to be the first job that I did was in the seaside. Um, so I think that just kind of one thing led me into that and, and you just become familiar with it and you stick with it and it was something I was clearly enjoying and, and getting. And do, do you think that people should go for something that they feel comfortable with. Definitely. I think in business it's really important, well I think, to be good at to be good at something, you have to enjoy it. You have to love it. Um, but the truth is, I'm sure there's many things. That, I mean, I didn't know I was going to enjoy dancing. I didn't discover that till I was 55. So there's many things in life that you can enjoy. But if you do find something, then that, that, sets you on, that sets you on your way. It sets you in good stead if you actually like the thing you're doing. But you're going to have ups and downs. I wonder if you'd say that. Because we're, we're talking really uh, about young people starting out, about their aspirations, about inspiring them. And... You, you, you had your downs as well as very substantial ups, didn't you? Well, you know, I think the, the downs are as important in life as the ups. And it's, but it's how you handle those downs. You know, the downs never stopped me. The downs made me think, hmm, didn't like that failing. I really don't like that feeling. What do I learn from it? And therefore, what do I go on and do differently? Rather than it knocking you out, it, it inspired you to have another go, did it? Absolutely. Do you know, oddly, I, I think... The disliking the downs outweighed the enjoying the highs. So I kind of focus more on, I don't want to do that again. I want to get it right. <laughs> and uh, well, getting it right involved a very, very substantial sale, didn't it? Which has enabled you to be an investor as well as a business leader. Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think it's very interesting. When I actually could could decide in life what, what it was that I wanted to do. Which is a privileged I, position. Which isn't is it? a very privileged yeah, position. Yeah. I understand that. Um, but it also, I then chose to do the thing that I had been doing all my life. You know, I realised that I love business. You know, so now I can do anything what I want to do. I had two weeks holiday and then my husband said, for goodness sake, go out there and get yourself some business. Was it, were you driving him mad? I was driving him potty. One of the things, I mean, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about investing and about education in a moment, but one of the things that you've really got involved in is environmental issues, isn't it? Yes, I mean, I, I think concern for the environment, I think 20 years ago, that was sort of ma marginal, but now I think we all understand um, that, you know, we, we can't carry on as we are. We need to adapt the way we live. Mm. And over all that very thumbnail sketch of a, a very interesting and uh, uh, very inspiring life, what, what do you think you've learned most? I mean, what, 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 what's, what would you do differently, in other words? Uh, do you know, I wouldn't do anything differently because I think getting things wrong is, is we've, as we've just talked about, getting things wrong is as important as getting things right. So I wouldn't change anything because actually I have learnt a lot and the thing that I've learnt is I know what I value in life, I know what's important to me, I know what I want to spend my time doing, I know the differences that I want to make and more important, I absolutely know what I don't want to do. And so many people who are really successful entrepreneurs who show real innovation, sadly in the past certainly, weren't those who'd gone through higher and post-degree education, and you're one of them. And I wondered how we could connect the education system and the inspiration of entrepreneurs together so that we can inspire young people who 
obviously think about going to university and maybe staying on, but inspire them to get engaged positively with business rather than just looking for somebody else to give them a job. Yeah, you see, that is so important because when I was at school, I didn't have the option of being an entrepreneur. You know, it was kind of, no, no, what profession do you want? And, and actually, it has to start early enough, and that's embedding it into the curriculum. So that is, you know, talking about entrepreneurs. I didn't, in history, I didn't learn about historic entrepreneurs. I learned about historical figures, and they're always kings and queens. And, you know, so, so it has to be embedded so that they're venerated, it's on the agenda, it's understood that it's an option for you. And that means that by the time you actually move on and look at higher education, you're already, your mind is already open to it. And I think if that had been there when I was at school, I mean, I've got an inquiring mind. I should have enjoyed school. Because that's the essence, actually, isn't it? An inquiring mind and an ability to be able to use it is that fundamental. Absolutely. And, and to me, it's kind of, I mean, I'm very lucky. I've been honoured by some universities now. And actually, I think, why is that important to me? Well, actually, I would have enjoyed university if I'd understood, if I'd been brought to a place that, that, that showed me that university could genuinely add something and help me do the thing that I really wanted to do. I didn't think it could. I, I just wondered, given that this particular institution's keen on developing creativity, using online as well as more traditional methods of teaching to actually reach people, whether you think there's a role that could join up the traditional skills, management education, uh, MBAs, with the real world of actually putting it into practice? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think tech Technologically, we have all got to get smarter. I mean, I, you know, I was one. Of, I was a pretty early adopter. My, in fact, my holiday business is one of the first to have a, a, an online booking system. So I've always embraced new technology, and it's wonderful. You know, I genuinely think the internet has improved our lives. There's many, many things that the innovations that don't make our lives better, but actually, we can do business better and easier. We can e-learning. E you know, that that can be part of it. I do think that human interaction is still important because in business we. Still still interact, um, but actually e-learning is part of it, but also the, the, the way that young people have grown up with technology, that gives them a massive advantage, and, and that's something that they can you know, move into their business life with an advantage. And, and continue learning. I mean, we learn on the job, don't we, all of us? I'm still learning. In fact, if I knew what I know now a few years ago, I'd have done things a bit differently. I wondered if you would. Well, if I knew what I knew today, <laughs> yesterday, I think I might. <laughs> No, it is so true. You know, you absolutely learning. And actually, um, I spent this morning with some with young people who are just starting on their entrepreneurial career. I learnt from them. I learnt from their questions. I I learnt the whole news way of thinking and the questions that they ask are actually slightly different to the questions that I was asking at their age. Mm. You know, so I saw this whole evolution. So no, I le I absolutely learn every day. So I think this kind of learning this this program of education that uses tradition that uses the online we can we can develop that for lifelong learning can't we so that it's part of the process absolutely i use um i spend way too much time on google um on in fact on any search engines um and and that is me learning that's me thinking i mean it's a great tool because it's me thinking oh i wonder how that works you know and then i go and i find out how it works or even for opinion you know and that access to so much information is fantastic but also we need to learn how to harness that how to manage it and, because and how, there's do we so square, much. how do we square this circle between people having a go just suddenly having an idea and having a go and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the notion that you've said more than once that you, it's really important to thoroughly understand a business before you embark everything on it. Well, uh, yeah, and I think the biggest thing for me, there's a massive chasm between um, an idea and a business proposition. You know, we can all have great business ideas, or, or great ideas, but they don't all make great business ideas. Um, so to me, they, you've got to be able to describe, you know, why there's a market, why there's enough people who actually want to buy into the product or the service at the price you can supply. You know, all of those things, not just, oh, bingo, I've got a great idea. So yeah, understanding the market is important. But do you know the, one, the thing that fascinates me more than anything? People are these brilliant, brilliant people. They don't think of route to market, you know, they make it and then they think, oh, I know how are we going to sell it? And actually, education is the thing that, that can, can that. teach those yeah. things. Absolutely. You can say, actually, marketing. this is the process. Yeah. This is the thing that you've got to go to. Because I, th I see a lot of really great entrepreneurial people, but slightly disconnected. And I'm sure they'll get where they want to go. 
but I think with a little bit more help in the structure, they'd get there quicker. I think that's an absolutely central message. What about the next winning ideas? Have you, I mean, I won't ask you what yours is because you'll want to get on with it rather than tell the world, but have you, is an area of development, an area of new thinking that you think that we should actually be addressing? As an investor, I tend to spend my time um, with other people bringing me their investments. But I guess the question is, therefore, is there a sector that I think is very interesting? Yeah. And I do think that the whole way that we harness information in the future, we gather, we are having so much stuff bombarded at us that actually the way we manage that and, and we harness and it and use it. it. Yeah. That's a ve whoever cracks th that, and there's another sector in terms of the environment, um, the whole thing about storing energy. You know, we've, you know, I'm sitting here on a lovely sunny day that whoever cracks the ability to properly store energy so that we don't have to use solar energy instantly, wind energy instantly, rather than, you know, great batteries the size of houses, whoever cracks that wins. And finally, because you've been very generous with your time, you have a bit of a reputation to be, be a bit fierce, you know. Really? I mean, yeah, not quite the <laughs> dragon of dragons den, but... Is this a is this a way of getting the the most out of people or testing them as people or is it to make them really have to be on their metal in terms of the idea? I get testy when I think people are spoiling an opportunity. You know, to me, opportunity is the thing an entrepreneur should grab hold of. So they've got I, an idea and they're messing it up. Is that yeah, yeah? And I just think you know you've got five people here who want to invest. Please don't mess it up. You know, uh, so that's when I get, I get feisty. Well, I think I've got away quite lightly. So, Deborah Mead, <laughs> thank you very much indeed for being in conversation today and good luck with the next idea. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah.